fitness and trekking. It's April, it's spring, and so this month I'm gonna be sharing with you four tips that you can use to improve your nutrition and improve your health and another simple, easy, quick recipe that you can make ahead. So first, let's get started with the tips. So tip number one is, believe me, you're not alone. Most people do not understand what types of foods, amounts of foods, or what they should be eating. You know, it's it's so hard because we have this multi-billion dollar food industry that spends so much money each and every year marketing to us um, non-nutritious, highly processed foods that really aren't foods that we should be eating anyways, right? And so it's so hard to know what the right thing is, what the wrong thing is. There's so many, you know, do it quick health fixes out there um, and if anything is giving you a result that's super fast it's probably not something that's going to be best for you or sustainable in the long run so let me give you an example of what i mean about the food industry so maybe they come out with a new snack bar so the snack bar is actually like loaded with sugar but they're trying to give you the illusion that it's healthy so in the commercial or maybe the picture they have the snack bar but in the background they have a salad in a glass of water so while they're not saying it out loud you're kind of thinking in your head without knowing subconsciously oh maybe I'll try that snack bar it must be healthy not because of what's in it but because of the subconscious messages of the salad in the water in the background believe me they hire people to do studies on how they can basically trick us into buying the product and then keep buying the product and figuring out what kind of chemicals or added sugar or oils can they put into the products to keep us coming back and wanting more and wanting more so the food industry is not necessarily on our side even though you now see coke and Pepsi commercials promoting health and only drinking one or two Pepsi's a day whatever they say so I would go ahead and say zero Pepsi's a day so that is the first one is really know that it's not your fault that you don't know like what the best foods are to eat a lot of us are in the same boat I was in that boat before um, before I really got into studying nutrition I tried like every diet I wasn't sure exactly what to do. So give yourself a little bit of break. It's not that you don't have willpower. It's just that we have all these this food propaganda coming at us all the time. So that is the first tip. The second tip is start reading your nutrition labels. So now on a nutrition label, there's going to be two sections. There's gonna be the actual nutrition facts that'll show the calories and the fat grams and that sort of thing. And then there will be the ingredients. And in addition to those two things, there's also going to be the front of the packaging on the on the food, right? And so that is what you want to look at least. So I have an example here. Um, this is something that's called Jif Naturals. So you see it is promoting its low sodium. It's natural. There are, what does that say, seven grams of, of protein per serving. It has like this little proud sponsor of the Olympics. So if you just went by the front of this container, you would think like, oh my gosh, that's such a good choice, right? So then we're gonna turn it around and then, like I said, we have the nutrition facts. I know that's not in very good focus, but you can kind of see. And then we have the ingredients list. So I'm gonna read you the ingredients list because this is the tip. Read the ingredients list first. So this is made from peanuts, sugar, palm oil, and contains salt and molasses. So you know that this is not necessarily a whole foods, there's extra things added to it. Because you can buy peanut butter or almond butter or any nut butter that's just peanuts is the only ingredient. Sometimes it'll have salt added to it too, which is okay, um, but you want to try to get foods that do not have added sugar or oil. So sugar is really, um, the food industry adds sugar to everything and that's kind of one of the reasons that we're addicted to food and it's the real reason of our obesity epidemic in the United States. It's not fat, fat does not make us fat, the sugar is what's making us all fat. So um, the tip is read the nutrition label, do not get things with added sugar or oil, like vegetable oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, soybean oil, corn oil. Those are all oils that are really, really high in what's called omega-3 fatty acids. 
And so while we do want a little bit of those in our diet, we actually want more omega-3 fatty acids. And those vegetable oils that I mentioned are really high in omega-6. And when we have too much omega-6, it actually causes inflammation in our bodies. And so inflammation, chronic stress and chronic inflammation actually is another precursor to disease. So if we can decrease the omega-6 and increase the omega-3, we're gonna be better off. So to recap, when you're reading the nutrition label, it's fine to know how many calories, it's fine to know how much protein's in there, it's fine to know how many carbs, you want to know that too, but you also want to know what the ingredients are because you want it to be as close to whole foods as possible. And when I say whole foods, I mean like, you know, broccoli is a whole food, one ingredient. Or maybe if you're going to buy oatmeal, make sure that it's just oats is the ingredients instead of oats and added sugar and a bunch of chemicals um, that you don't really need in your body. So look for that, make sure no added sugar and no added vegetable oil. That is tip number two. So that'll get you closer to eating whole foods because you know sometimes we do just have to buy the processed or the packaged foods. You know, we're not always gonna be able to eat fresh fruits and vegetables and lean meats and um, you know, potatoes and rice all the time, right? So that is tip number two. Now, tip number three is get cooking. So all too often we are a society of convenience and we want it now and you know it's so easy. There's fast food, there's quick options everywhere that we can buy. So if you get cooking and you start preparing more and more of your meals, you're gonna know what put, you're putting in your body and you're gonna be in control of that instead of like we saw in here when you think this is natural but actually it has a bunch of added stuff that you don't need. So start cooking and plan and prepare in advance. So let's say you know that you're gonna be gone for, for the week, right? You're gonna be on the road. Well, you could at least plan and prepare in advance your breakfast and your lunches, right? And take that with you and your snacks. Um, start somewhere. Um, I say if you don't wanna cook ahead, at least have a plan and have all the ingredients ready to go so you know what you're gonna make when you get home or when you get to your stop um, because that is the most important. If you have the ingredients, you're more likely to make it or to eat it than if you don't. If you're like, oh, well I forgot that I really needed chicken and I don't have chicken so I'm just gonna have fast food instead, right? Or if you get home on, you know, if you get home from work, if you're working in the office and you get home and you don't have one of the ingredients, um, you're just gonna order a pizza for the family. So if you plan and prepare in advance what you're gonna make for that time period, then you'll have all the ingredients, you'll be ready to go, you're more likely to actually eat and make the healthy food and not make an excuse, right? We've all been there. I know that I've been there. Okay, so let's recap those first three tips. So give yourself a break. It's not your fault. You don't understand the, the best foods to eat. It's so confusing. The food industry is not our friend, right? So step two, read the nutrition labels, specifically the ingredients. Step three, start cooking and plan in advance. At minimum, have all the ingredients and everything that you need to make it if you don't wanna prepare in advance. I am a big advocate of preparing in advance. I usually cook twice a week and then um, I have it ready to go. It's so nice. Um, the last thing, the last tip that I have to share with you is make one change at a time and celebrate your successes. So all too often we're like, I'm gonna get healthy and I'm gonna do this. And then what happens is like, okay, I'm gonna start eating healthy and I'm gonna start working out and I'm gonna start reading and I'm gonna start doing all these things, this big huge list, right? And you're changing everything and you're completely taking away what you did before. And then what happens is you're not able to accomplish all of that so you just get frustrated and then overwhelmed and then you don't reach your goals and then you're on this cycle of, oh, I'm gonna start on Monday, right? How many people have been on the, oh, I'm gonna start on Monday? <laughs> So pick one thing. If you're new to all of this, maybe it's simply just drinking more water during the day instead of drinking soda. Or maybe if you're really addicted to soda, maybe you start drinking a sparkling flavored water that doesn't have a lot of calories and sugar, like LaCroix, that's my favorite. And if you do that for a month, wow, celebrate that success and enjoy the journey. Instead of being down on yourself like a lot of us do, you know, oh dang, I could have done more, I should have done this. Celebrate what you have done and then move forward to the next goal. So take small steps in order to reach your goal. That's gonna be the most important. So here we go. 
It's not your fault. It's not that you don't have willpower. Number one, give yourself a break. The food industry sucks, right? They're not our friend. Number two, read the nutrition labels, specifically the ingredients. Number three, cook and prepare in advance. And number four, make small incremental changes at a time and celebrate your success along the way. The journey is part of the fun. So those are my tips for you. And now for the recipe. So now we're going to go over the easiest crock pot chicken recipe that you can make. So first, take your cooking spray. I'm using the olive oil kind here. Um, I recommend that or the coconut oil. Spray a little bit in the bottom of the pan. Then go ahead and just place your chicken breasts in. So this is going to be two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. There's a pretty good deal at Costco for these if you shop at Costco. Um, they have some that are um, humanely raised and they don't have antibiotics and that sort of thing in them. So chicken breasts are in. Then season it simply with a little black pepper. I like pepper, so again, you can do this to taste. And then a little bit of sea salt. I prefer the um, Himalayan pink sea salt. Um, you can use any sea salt you want. You could use regular table salt if you wanted, but the sea salt has more minerals than the regular table salt does, and it's bigger chunks, so I feel like you can control it a little bit better. So then we got that. So we've seasoned the chicken, it's in there. Now this is the easiest part, salsa. So this is the brand that I got, you just need two cups of salsa. I like this one because when you look at the ingredients list, there's no added sugar or oil. And all you do is dump it over. So you want two cups of salsa. Then you want to cook that on high for four hours, or I actually like to cook it on low for about six or seven hours, maybe even overnight. Um, and then when you're done, all you have to do is take two forks and shred it. And you can use this for so many things. You can eat it plain, you can top um, a baked potato with it, you can eat it with rice, you can use some corn tortillas to make tacos. Um, you can even put it on a salad um, with some veggies, and the salsa kind of acts like a dressing. So you can use that as like a chicken salad too. So, so many options. I hope you try it. I hope you love it. Super, super easy. Enjoy. So I hope you enjoyed the recipe. Um, basically, I wanted to do something that was super simple. So it's like two ingredients plus the sea salt and black pepper, right? But you can take this and you can make it into so many things during the week. So maybe you could do make a baked potato and do a loaded baked potato. You could actually make tacos. You could make it into a salad. You could take some, um, cook up some fresh vegetables and add this to it. You could eat it with rice. You can eat it plain. There are so many options that you can do with this. You can even add extra seasoning if you want to, like cumin would be really yummy to add to it or a taco seasoning type flavor. So try it out. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed the four tips and the recipe this month. Next month, we're going back to moving our bodies. So if you have any requests for workouts or questions, please comment below and I will make sure to get those in the video for next month. So remember to eat real food, be healthy, and feel amazing. Enjoy your month.